Hey guys! What is Board Smashing Grocery Store Phones? Well, I buy an unusual phone, unbox it, play around with it, durability test it, then I smash it. Why do I have to keep on explaining this, especially when I'm on the 13th episode? Well, let's just say uploads in this series are not exactly daily, and I don't want my newer subscribers to feel left out of the cool kids club. Why is it called Board Smashing Grocery Store Phones? Just binge watch the last 12 episodes here for an explanation. If you're now caught up, welcome to this brand new episode of Board Smashing Grocery Store Phones. Today, we'll be finally doing the iPhone! No, not this one. The first one. Well, yes, but actually, no. In 2005, Apple announced the Motorola Rocker E1, or the iTunes phone. The first phone that had iTunes support and a music playing interface that looks like an iPod's. And I bought one a while back from eBay. I wonder if the Motorola Rocker E1 is rare, cause there was only one listing available from it, and it was from China for $50. If we know anything about the Chinese, they just love making knockoffs of iPhones, so hopefully for the sake of this video, this is a legit iTunes phone. I don't trust the Chinese. And with that, let's unbox this! E1. I don't know what this thing is. Can someone tell me why every time I get a charging brick from China, there's no holes in the prongs? Like, why? Is that for safety reasons? Well, unsafe reasons, probably. Charger. Definitely not USB-C. And the phone itself. It looks pretty used, so hopefully it's a good sign that this is a legit iTunes phone. Complete with ear gunk and a Russian keyboard. Mm. Mm. Batteries already installed. Let's plug her in. Oh, this is just great. America once again does things better. Charger's kind of weird. There's this big port, but you only plug it into this side. It doesn't even go in all the way. Oh, battery charging. And let's power it on. Insert SIM. Just ignore that. It's not letting me exit. Come on. Do I really need a SIM card to be able to play around on this thing? God damn it. This is what happens if you don't plan ahead. Hmm. I found this old AT&T SIM card. It's not the right size, but hopefully it works if the pins are touching. So stupid. This is the first phone on this show that needed a SIM card just to play around with. It says searching for network, but hopefully we can just bypass it since it has a SIM card. Yes! It works! Honestly, I didn't think that was gonna work. Looks like we might have to change the language. It looks to be in English, but I never seen that word before. It says mensages here, but it says message here for some reason. Okay, we find out if this is a legit iTunes phone by seeing if it has iTunes on it. Ooh, and there it is. Pretty laggy though. We'll get back to this in a minute. Let's take a look at the camera on this thing. There it is. All right, and I didn't think about this before, but I have to take out the battery again so I can put a micro SD card in it. Hopefully this works. Ooh, there was a light show. Back to the camera. I really like this joystick kind of thing. Switch to storage device. Trans unformatted. I'm guessing that's it. Format it. Trans. Just trans. <laughs> 999 remaining. Alright, 3, 2, 1. Sure, let's store that. Oh yeah, this thing had a flash, even though the first, like, three iPhones never had a flash. I'm gonna try with the flash, and it's just the flash that just stays on all the time. That's much better. The flash helps. And I also read that this thing has video. Oh, we gotta see that. Videos, street scene. I love this 5 frames per second LSD scene. I want to shoot video, come on, where's that? Oh, new video. 58 remaining. 
58 minutes, 58 videos, 58 seconds, who knows. Hey guys, right now I'm recording video on the first. I think there's like a five second limit. <laughs> yep, there's a five second limit on videos. This thing is basically Vine before it was cool. I gotta make this video quick. Hey guys, oh god. Hey guys, oh god. I'm shooting video on the iTunes phone. Anything else? Games? Java. Crazy or safe? Let's be crazy. Key criteria. Unlocking potential. What is that? Is that a penguin with huge glove hands? Oh, it looks like it's similar to that Worms game. Yep, that's the Worms game. With creepy penguins. Ugh. Okay, I made a mistake. I should have played it safe. Safe. With a safe. Also by key criteria. Uh-huh, 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 except. Password. Is this the game? At least five characters, yeah. Oh, I don't think this is the game. You have to make a password for some reason. Oh, this isn't a game. This is a place to uh, store your personal data. That was weird, because the same company that made the Creepy Penguin game also made this. What does this button do? Ring lights. <laughs> I like hyperactive the best. Whoa. Tsunami. I don't know why it's named that. That's pretty cool. There's some preloaded pictures on this. Knock off Spider-Man. Uh, flower. <laughs> Fish with creepy face. Uh, people ignoring sexual assault. I don't know. <laughs> Softcore porn. Default sounds. Let's play expand. Ooh. Wow, there's a bunch of preloaded songs. Themes. Let's change it to groove. We get sausages lifting off the plate as the wallpaper. Club. Thick. And look at that face. We'll keep it on this. And yeah, that's about all the features on the iTunes phone. Huh, it still has the screen protector on. Yes. I left it for a while and it appears it started a screensaver. Well, that's a great use of battery. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. They didn't call this the iTunes phone for nothing. Let's see if we can get some music on this. From iTunes. After doing some research, the included cable is only for charging. So, I had to buy this cable from eBay if I actually wanted to sync data. Great, more money wasted on obsolete plastic. Let's put this stupid thing to use. I highly doubt a 2016 MacBook Pro with the newest version of iTunes will recognize it, but we'll see. We got the iTunes Do Not Disconnect, like the iPods. Disk not ejected properly. Yeah, the Do Not Disconnect just disappeared. Maybe it has to be tighter. Plugging it in again. Got the Do Not Disconnect again. And we got the Disk Not Ejected properly again. And nothing showing up in iTunes, which is what I expected. This is why I collect vintage Macs. I've been waiting for my entire life for these things to be actually useful. Ignore that, please. We got iTunes version 6 on this, which came out in 2005, which should work with this phone. Come on. Yeah, we got that same message on my modern Mac. Ugh, I'm so upset. I wanted to sync music onto it. It's probably a problem with the phone or the cable. Who knows? Okay, we might have some hope. I put the micro SD card from the phone into the computer, and there's a file on it called iTunes. And right now, that file is definitely empty. So we're gonna put some music onto that and see if the phone will read it. Moment of truth. Why is it still saying do not disconnect? Nothing's plugged in. Mmm. Restart. I think I bricked it. This is the first time I bricked a phone just by playing with it. Oh wait, no. It just took a long time to start up for some reason. Usually it oh. Oh, come on. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's being super laggy. Oh my god, this is the slowest, most buggiest feature phone I ever played with. Maybe because the battery is low, I'd never seen a phone act this horrible when the battery was almost dead. Oh my god. Piece of shit. Ugh, I need to call 911 on my iTunes phone! I'm moving the joystick. Come on, iTunes. Fine! 
I'll just let you charge up. Okay, yeah. After I plugged in the charger, it looks like it's acting normal again. Okay, iTunes. Come on, you can do it. Let's see if the song's on there. Of course not. Okay, this phone has disappointed me several times already. Will it disappoint me again in the durability tests? Before I begin the test, I want to introduce a competitor. The iPod Nano. Some more history on the Motorola Rocker E1. It was announced on the same day as the first iPod Nano, making the CEO of Motorola accuse Apple of purposely undercutting the Rocker E1 because the iPod Nano was better in every which way. Except for phone stuff, I guess. But who cares about the functionality between each one? I just want to see which one's more durable. But instead of destroying the first gen iPod Nano, I'm going to be destroying the second gen. Due to a recall making the first gen more rare and prices higher on eBay. The second gen Nano is pretty similar to the first, but more importantly, it was $13. First up, the scratch test. These locking chargers are pretty good. Now, the front side. iPod Nano. Metal was grinded down pretty good. Still works. Rocker E1. Not too badly scuffed on the back. On the front, some of the buttons are wearing down, but... Working. The branding is gone, though. Next up, the drop test. And I'm gonna try to do video on the E1 Rocker. Backside. Three, two, one. The iPod still works, but the E1 restarted, which means the video didn't save. Second test, corner. Three, two, one. I hit save on the video, but then it white screened, and I think it's restarting again. I doubt the video saved, and now it says insert SIM, so I gotta fix that. But the iPod is still working. Uh-oh. But, I think the clicker stopped working. I can't hear any more clicks. Alright, got it back on. Can we get one video to save? Final test. Face down. Three, two, one. And yeah, it's restarting again. Yeah, it didn't save any videos, but it still works. The iPod also still works. Ugh, but an iPod's not an iPod without the clicking. Oh, I miss it. I'm gonna give that round to the Rocker E1, because even though it kept on restarting every time it was dropped, nothing broke, unlike the iPod, which the clicker broke. And now let's take things to the extreme. Ludicrous drop test. iPod. Three, two, one. And it's completely fine. I'm surprised, actually. Ludicrous drop test. Rocker E1. Guarantee the video won't save, but it's whatever. Three, two, one. I see the screen is on. The screen cover popped off and the keyboard is bulging out, but it still works. But I'm gonna give this round to the iPod since nothing fell off or popped out. Now for the water test, but with a twist. To fit the themes of these devices, instead of using water, I'm gonna be using apple juice.
both still working. Come on, can one just die already? A little bit more. Okay, I think that's long enough. As you can see by the iPod screen, it was definitely affected by the juice. And the phone has a white screen. And it's working now! Oh wait, the phone shut off. Huh, it said low battery before it shut off. I don't know if it was because of- oh. What? Whoa. I don't know if it was because of the juice, but now it has this MS-DOS thing. Battery low, cannot program. The iPod's still on though, although the screen is glitching out. So yeah, I don't know who to give this round to. You decide. This video wasn't supposed to be on the iPod, so I'm just gonna put it out of its misery. Oh, do you hear that? It's saying put me out of my misery. Still alive? Okay, yeah, that's more like it. And to finish off the iTunes phone, we're gonna be drying it off. I highly doubt it, but... <gasps> ah! Zombie! <gasps> well, the down below camera view wasn't such a good idea. So, we can now conclude that the iTunes phone is... a phone. I can't come up with a better outro! I'm still tired from my trip to VidCon. <coughs> Watch the vlogs! And so with that, thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna get back to watching The Office now. Uh, comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye! Ugh, what was I thinking? The way the table broke was pretty cool though. At least I finished this video on the last day I could film outside.